best position. Best position. The best position. So, uh, as he has uh, said, this, this is going to be more a sharing session than a presentation. We are going to have a few classes later. Of course, we start with theoretical background. We're going to share uh, how you can teach vocabulary. Most of what we have in the presentation, of course, can apply to middle and high school, okay? So we'll start with the concept definition of what is vocabulary, then kinds of vocabulary, because there are different kinds, <coughs> some approaches to vocabulary instruction, and we'll end up with a workshop where we're going to work in groups of four, and then we'll have like three tasks. So the concept definition, definition is this. So any words that you can underline, keywords. Communicating. Must know. And we have two types. Vocabulary. Words in speaking. And of course we have receptive vocabulary when students are listening. Okay. So the first one of course it has to do with receptive vocabulary. So while students are listening, they get vocabulary without doing any anything. And of course we have the productive one. So we'll try to go a little bit fast. So here for receptive we have words that learners recognize and understand when they are used in context, not out out of context, but which they cannot produce and this is we want our students to produce. Okay. Uh, productive. So learners they understand and they can pronounce correctly, I'm sorry, and use constructively in speaking and writing. No more, just listen. Okay, so this is called active knowledge. We're talking about now knowledge. They know, they understand, they can pronounce correctly and they can produce. So here they talk about repetition for students because you know if we want to have students good retention, some vocabulary key vocab items have to be repeated, not by the teacher, but they are there. And we're going to talk about the number that we had to say high frequency vocabulary. So, chants are clear, because we don't teach just words, we teach chants, expressions. So, might be studied for three minutes, now, another three minutes, a few hours later, three minutes a day later, it goes up. But our uh, problem here in Morocco and for uh, foreign language learning, it's it's very limited because they, they use English only in yes. class and this is where I'm going to talk about developing strategies to learn vocabulary outside outside the classrooms. Okay. So for Griffin, he found that most forgetting seems to occur soon after learning. This is normal when you ask students about something we just did and you find very few students who can answer. It's natural. This is how we learn vocabulary. So this is a table that explains, we'll just skip it, about repetition and time. Of course, this is for uh, first language. This is acquisition. We're talking about learning. Okay, our concept. Attraction has to do with forgetting. So if you don't do this, this is what we have. Students 
forgets. So the approaches are incidental learning. Then we have explicit instruction. This is what we do in in class in general, especially in middle school. And we have independent strategy development. Okay? For incidental, this requires that teachers provide opportunities for extensive reading and listening. You don't have to present. For low proficiency learners, they can benefit from graded readers. I think most of you are already working on this because they will be repeatedly exposed to high frequency vocabulary. Okay? It may be useful also to devote some class time to SSS reading or sustainable silent reading. I think here in our uh, directorate uh, there were many teachers who did this. You just get into class and you can just opt for uh, like half an hour or give students readers and you say just read silently. If you don't like it, just turn the page, read a paragraph here. You, you don't ask them to do any, anything. They have to do it silently. For explicit instruction, of course, it involves <coughs> diagnosing the words learners need to know. So this is where the teacher, the work of the teacher comes here. You have to pre prepare. This is why I call it explicit. <coughs> of course, you present words for the first time with all the words. We're going to see how other strategies, because there are teachers that come with the just write a word on the board and say, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. You see? Or ask students to go to the dictionary and look for it. Sometimes definitions from the dictionary mean explanations. <laughs> Elaborating word knowledge, how much do they know about the word, what part of speech is it, etc. And of course, they say that high frequency words are more or less approximately 3,000 3, words. I think in, for our students at the school, it's much less, of course. So this is also called sight vocabulary words that they hear and they see a lot. Uh, here we're going to talk about independent strategy development. We want teachers to work on them so that the students can learn vocabulary better and efficiently. I think uh, most of you do some of these strategies like semantic mapping, guessing from context, and graphic morpheme which has to do with sound analysis, you have collocation, association, word war, etc. You don't have to do them all, of course, you can opt for one strategy at a time. Okay. For guessing from context, this is important. Learners need to know 95% of the text that this this is really important because sometimes, even in high school, when the teachers choose, <coughs> they choose a, a text like for a quiz, and when you read it as a teacher, you don't understand half, half of it. It's too challenging for students. There should be only a few words for them to to guess, and those are the words you ask them, you ask about in quizzes or tests. When a word is worth guessing, they should follow. This is five-step procedure. This is by nation and coding. So the first one is this. Is it a, a noun? Is it a verb, adjective, adverb, etc.? Then the immediate context. The wider context, and by the way, this it has to do with connect, connections because they, they do the same in Arabic and in 
French and other subjects. Guess the meaning of the unknown word, only the unknown word. And of course, check that the guess is correct. So, this is a, a task for you. So, if you give, imagine you give your students a sentence like this. We had a horses. Oh, that's it. What is it? No. no. See? You can say a uh, unknown, but we don't know. Then, more context. We had a horses, but the handle broke, so we know it has a handle. Then, a wider context, but the handle broke, so we had to beat the egg with a fork. So here we get the idea we're talking about. Then, what is it? Are you Something that would be egg beater. Egg beater, yeah, that's it. So here you have the context clues. This is normally what students should develop. You have handle, broke, beat, the egg. These are clues. Then we have the okay. The later indicators. And of course, the meaning would be an egg beater. Okay. So this is when you teach students this, and then they they can work on tags or on their own. So we have word mapping too, we have semantic mapping or concept or mapping or word clusters. We go quickly. So these are visual displays of word meanings organized by, uh, to depict relationships with other words. Remember it's like a web. Yeah. So we have here spider web. Diagram, then you have derivations, like a subject spy can have this diagram and you ask students to come up with words. Then we have, of course, here, like for middle school, when we talk about vegetables and fruits, of course, you have eggplants, pomegranate is. Lockwoods and garbanzos. I, I was uh, like, uh, I did not, I would never seen this garbanzos. They're just simply chickpeas. Another word for chickpeas. So this is has to do with association, and you can use umbrella terms like hyper. When you say hyper, something big. Okay, like vegetables and fruits. In middle school, we do like this, we do fruit, food, etc. Yeah. And of course, we can also work with hyponyms. Like for vegetables, when we have eggplant, it's a hyponym, it's under the umbrella. So these are the pictures pomegranate is, and of course, that's chickpeas and locoids. That's what we do most in middle school. Yeah, that's good. You do this all the, all the time. Of course, we have word mapping when we talk about word web or topics. Another one? Matching. Co collocations. Matching and collocations. And of course, the wrong up is that. This is a summary. We don't have an overall theory of how vocabulary is acquired. Pay attention here, they're talking about acquisition more than learning. learning. But what he tries to say is that we don't know really what happens when we start learning vocabulary or which would be the best way. But if we give the tools to students, they can do it from there. Um, and it helps in, in class. And of course, we're going to move to the tasks. We are going to work in groups of four. We have three tasks. As he has said, we're going to, because Sibrahim still has another presentation about grammar, so we'll have a timekeeper too, and we'll try to do it in a short, short time. Okay, I think we'll have the same. Same groups. I think I have more than enough.
The teachers can have when teaching vocabulary. So you have to decide what the problem is. For example, A. Teacher, now the expression I want to teach you is when it is a phrasal verb, run on, you know, with a verb plus particle, anyway, that is what I want to teach, and it means it continues longer than you expected, that is when you are talking about a show or a film or something like that. So what is the problem here? Ambiguous. In what way? Because it's not meaningful. It's not meaningful. Okay, let me help you. If you just let's uh, switch the context. University students, would it be okay? For university students? Yes, yes, yes. What kind of language is the teacher using? It's meta language. It's like if you come and you want to teach the present purpose that you start from the beginning, you know, teaching, you know, the present purpose, this is the form and something starts in the past, continues into the present and the future. This is meta language. The students don't know about that. You have to start from Base, basics or scratch. So you go, you do the same, B through E. So let's take three, three minutes. Can I help you? So it's more on just for.